the the topic this time uh, for It's a Brain Thing is, as you know, we talk about different topics that, that have to do with the brain, different illnesses and such. This time it's anxiety disorders part two. Last time we talked about two different anxiety disorders, panic, panic disorder and generalized anxiety disorder. And we talked all about the part of the brain that's responsible for, you know, for our, all of our fear response that we all have, and animals too. And so that part of the brain is really fairly much responsible for some of these illnesses too. There's some other parts that kind of, that, that kind of kick in as well. And we'll get into those as, to, as the uh, talk goes on. But, but this time, um, basically it's going to be obsessive compulsive disorder, which is uh, OCD is the easier way to say that. I didn't write it down here, but OCD. This just means disorder, by the way. Um, and the other two that we're going to talk about are social phobia, social anxiety disorder is the other word for that, and um, post-traumatic stress disorder. So there's a lot to cover. Again, I always do this, try to cram too much into one hour, but uh, stop me at any time for questions. As you guys remember, as the folks that have been here before remember, um, I try to do, I try to go um, uh, into like a case to kind of give you a real world example of some of these illnesses. And so I'll present a little piece of a case, and then I'll talk about the illness, and then at the end we'll talk about the, you know, what happens to that person. And again, they're not somebody you're going to be able to identify, although there are very common things that, that I've actually seen in practice before. So the first one is an obsessive compulsive disorder case. Um, I was talking to somebody before the talk about this, about this illness, this brain illness, and uh, there's several movies out. There's, I couldn't remember. There's one with Nicolas Cage. And I can't remember what it is now. It's, it's fairly recent, uh, and he had OCD. At least he looked like it. Matchstick Men. That's what it was. Thank you. Um, and then, as good as it gets, with Jack Nicholson, he had OCD in that movie as well. Uh, and then Monk. I guess there's a show called Monk, called Monk. I haven't actually seen that show, but I understand he he probably has that too. So if you guys have seen those shows, you can sort of think about those characters, and when I go through some of these symptoms and things uh, about these illnesses. So the first one, the first case here, this is an obsessive compulsive disorder case again. This is a 25-year-old man, and he's got a preoccupation or obsession with germs that he's had since childhood, okay? He's bothered by thoughts of contamination by these germs, and so if he touches like a public door handle or a toilet seat or shakes hands with somebody in public, you know, somebody, uh, uh, then he feels that the germs that he gets from that, uh, he obsesses about that, and he feels like he might die from that contamination, from some infection or something. Uh, these thoughts are, are more than just sort of, I mean, all of us have some of that kind of stuff, right? But none of us like to touch toilet seats, right? But these thoughts are kind of popping into his head and he can't control them. They just pop in there and he can't seem to block them or shut them down. They cause him so much anxiety that he has a compulsion that any time he touches something like a, a chair or a door handle or a toilet seat or whatever, that he has to go and wash his hands. And the, the hand washing is getting to the point where he's washing his hands over 100 times a day and he's got dried, cracked, you know, as you can imagine what your skin would be like after washing that much. Um, his hands are all are raw. Um, but he feels like if he doesn't wash his hands, and if he doesn't do it in the correct way, meaning four times on this side of the finger, four times on this side, four times on that side, or, or whatever the ri ritual is, that he didn't do it right, and he's got to start all over and do it again. This is, this is of course, leading to hours a day of washing his hands. Um, because of that, of course, he's not able to work very well, and he loses his job. Uh, he's brought into his family doctor by his parents because uh, he's starting to avoid going out in public altogether for fear of the germs and the contamination. Um, the family doctor refer refers him to a psychiatrist, thinking it's, that it sounds like OCD and not being real sure about how to treat it. So he refers him to the psychiatrist. And then we'll pick up again towards the end of this discussion here about what happens to him. Um, you guys might be thinking, this is pretty rare stuff, why do I care? It's about 1 in 50 adults in the United States that have this, so it's not, it's not extremely rare. And there's also, like we talk about with all these different brain illnesses, there's all different uh, spectrums of these things. So some people, have, some people are, you know, have a lot of OCD symptoms, other people just have a little bit of that, um, and some have none at all, as, as, as you probably realize. What is OCD? It's, it's uh, really the obsessions. The top part, the obsessions and the compulsions. That's what it is. Obsessions are thoughts, and these are these intrusive thoughts that pop into your head about things that really bother you. They're not things that you want to have happen or that you want to do, but they're things that you obsess about that, that are kind of scary to you. The compulsions are typically behaviors. They're things that you do to kind of ease the anxiety caused by these obsessions, okay? So to give you an example, what, what kind of things are these besides just thoughts? I'll give you some more examples. They're, they're not just excessive worries about day-to-day -day stuff, like can I get the bills paid, or 
can I get to work on time or what's going to happen uh, today with my child in school. It's not that kind of stuff. Uh, that would be more generalized anxiety disorder. I'm worried a lot about that kind of stuff uh, and it interfered with your function. So um, people try to ignore these obsessive obsessions. It doesn't seem to work very well. They can try, but it just, it's very hard for them to do that. Um, and again, like I said, they usually go against your grain. They're things that you don't really want to have. And I'll give you some examples in a second. Compulsions, on the other hand, usually go sort of, are things that sort of make sense to you if you think about it, like the hand washing, because he's afraid of, his obsession is a contamination, the, the getting, getting germs, right, and dying from it. So what would you do if you, you know, if you were worried about that, what would you do? You'd wash a lot, right? And if you have people do, you know, just not just hand washing, some people take lots of showers through the day or things like that. Um, these things don't have to be like outward behaviors always. They can also be mental things. Like one obsession, one example of an obsession is sometimes people um, who are pretty devout Christian people or religious people, they'll be sitting in church and they'll have this obsession. What if I swear in church? What if I just said the F-bomb right here in the middle of church, right? <coughs> That's terrible. If you're a pretty cr a Christian person, a devout person, you're, it's a terrible feeling. You don't want that to happen. So what do you do compulsively? Pray for forgiveness over and over again, because in your mind that's a sin. Well, it's probably not a sin. It's not something you're under control. It's it's under your control. It's it's an obsession. But so the, the compulsions tend to go with the obsessions in that manner. I'll give you some more examples in a minute. Um, they they tend to lead to kind of rigid rules and different rituals and things. Like I was telling you about with the hand washing, he has to has to wash his hands just a certain way, and if he doesn't get it done just right, it's got to start all over again. That kind of thing. Um, the, the contamination, what are the common obsessions, the most common ones? Contaminations are, are, are one example. Repeated doubts is another one. I mean, this is kind of common, right? We've all left the house and, and thought, scratched our heads, did I shut off the stove? Did I unplug the curling iron? Did I lock the door? Right? We've all had those thoughts, haven't we? You guys all had those thoughts? At least I have. Maybe that's just me. But no, I think all of us have. What happens, though? We go back, we check. Check it once, we you know, click it, whatever, we think the door's locked, we go back and we head to work and we're okay. And we, we reassure ourselves, we can reassure ourselves that we've, we've done that. With OCD, they call it the doubting disease because the person leaves after checking it the first time, they doubt again, they, they start doubting again, the obsession kicks in, oh my gosh, I didn't do it. I think the house is gonna, uh, somebody's gonna break into the house or, or the house is gonna burn down if I didn't shut the stove off or whatever. So they leave, they go back again, they check it, they start to go out again. They, they, they just they can't get it through their head that they did it right. You know, they didn't feel the deadbolt cl click like it should have, or there's some morsel of doubt in their heads that they didn't do it right the first time. So the so basically these that's why they call it the doubting disease because there's a, there's a pathway in the brain that just will not let them let that go. You know, um, another common uh, obsession is maybe I've caused some harm to somebody. So you hit a bump in the road, oh my gosh, did I just run over a child? You know, and, and that's, imagine, that's kind of a horrible feeling if you just thought you might have run over a child or a pet or something like that for somebody. And then what happens? The compulsion is you drive around the block over and over again looking to make sure you didn't run over a child or run over something you know, that, that, that would have been horrible. Another type of obsession or common obsession is having things in certain order, okay? We've all probably known people like this, but you know, having, you have to have everything in a certain order. And, you know, that in and of itself is not an issue, but if you spend hours a day organizing it and straightening it and you know making it just right, that's probably a problem, right? It's hours a day doing something like that, it's probably not a good use of your time and you're, it's probably interfering with relationships or jobs or other things. Sexual imagery is another thing. Sometimes people get, again, and it seems to be people that would, that would not have that kind of thing, the people that you know, are, are um, uh, really bothered by that the most. You know, the folks that, that, that it doesn't bother them, they don't have that obsession. They have something else. But the folks that it bothers them, they have this type of thing. Pornographic images and things like that in their heads. Common compulsions, they all sort of, like I said, they go along with the obsession. So if, if you have con contamination obsession, you do a lot of washing. Um, if you have a feeling that you might uh, curse out in church, then you do a lot of praying for forgiveness, let's say. Um, if you have an obsession of symmetry and everything, you want everything to be all organized in a certain way, then it's the, you're going to be checking and, and organizing and, and uh, arranging things a lot. That's the compulsion. 